What you're seeing is the brutal reality in Ukraine. Right now, somewhere in Ukraine, trained soldiers are wasting dozens of bullets trying to hit a 20 centimeter target flying at 100 kilometers per hour. And even when they succeed, it's pure luck. Because in modern warfare, all sides face the same deadly problem. The numbers are frightening. 60 to 70 percent of battlefield casualties now come from drones. But an 18-year-old boy whose neighborhood was bombed armed only with YouTube and a 3D printer, has just found a solution that the billion-dollar arms industry couldn't. First, let me introduce you to Yuri, because his story is impressive and shows how war is changing forever. If you follow the war, you may have noticed how the modern battlefield has turned into a transparent nightmare. Anything that can be seen can also be destroyed. Most of the first-person view drones used in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine currently cost very little. We're talking about something in the $500 range, but don't be fooled by the price. They are capable of taking down tanks worth millions. Even top tanks like the American M1 Abrams and Russian T-90M are now easy targets. NATO has even brought up a shocking statistic about them. More than 60% of the destroyed Russian tanks were taken out by these cheap drones. And do you know what's even scarier? Doctors on the front lines report that drones now cause between 60 and 70% of all casualties. Take a moment to think about that. In previous wars, you were in danger if you were two kilometers from the front line. But today, you can be a target up to 40 kilometers away. As you can see, the deadly zone has expanded and no one is safe anymore. Soldiers, supply trucks, command posts, they're all under constant threat. And here comes the first problem. How do you defend cities against these small devices? Look. A Patriot missile costs between four and seven million dollars. Meanwhile, a German Iris T missile costs six hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and the Russian drone they intercept between thirty and one hundred thousand dollars. You spend dollar seven million to shoot down something worth dollar thirty thousand. It's a brutal imbalance, and Russia knows it. That's why forty percent of the drones in the night attacks are decoys. They don't carry explosives. They exist only to exhaust Ukraine's expensive missiles. It's pure economic warfare. But there's another problem. Let's take the Patriot as an example again. The global production of these missiles is six hundred per year. Ukraine could easily use all of them in just a few weeks. Picture that happening in the trenches. Using a half-million-dollar missile to shoot down a $500 first-person view drone is impossible. The reality is quite different. The soldiers are on the front lines on their own, defending themselves from drones, shooting with rifles, with machine guns, sometimes even with regular shotguns. And this brings us back to Yuri, why did his invention revolutionize the battlefield? Yuri grew up in Chuliavka, a semi-industrial neighborhood in the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. When Russia invaded in February 2022, heavy fighting broke out near the city zoo right next to where he lived. Since then, Russian drones and missiles have constantly attacked his neighborhood. At the time he was 17 years old, he was a young man frustrated with school and desperate to help, but he was too young to enlist. He spent hours watching YouTube videos about military equipment, improvised engineering, and 3D printing. He wanted to contribute in some way. He had an idea. He created a quieter propeller 
for first-person view drones and presented the project to a defense incubator, but it was rejected. But Yuri was determined and didn't give up. What he did changed the focus. If he couldn't improve the Ukrainian drones, maybe he could destroy the Russian ones. His new idea emerged in the most unlikely place. During a first-person shooter game match, he was playing online with a friend who knew about ammunition. While they were talking on voice chat discussing game mechanics, Yuri got inspired. What if he could create ammunition that launched a net, a net that would get tangled in the drone's propellers and bring them down from the sky? The idea was simple but brilliant, and best of all, it was cheap. Yuri and his partner then built the first prototype, a grenade launcher round that fired a net. They presented the project to the presidential brigade. A soldier looked at it and said, cool, an anti-drone grenade launcher round. But that unit didn't have any testing procedures. In other words, they didn't know how to help. Time went by and a few weeks later, the third brigade got in touch. This isn't just any brigade. It's considered one of the most legendary in Ukraine and is known for using cutting edge technology. Just to give you an idea, in the summer of 2025, they made history by capturing a Russian prisoner using only drones. They didn't use any soldiers on site, only robots. The officer who examined the prototype was shocked to find out that the creators were still in high school. His reaction was like, what kind of kids in the world make ammunition? Ukrainian kids, of course, but there was another problem. In that brigade, there were few grenade launchers and they needed them to use that ammunition. What did they have? Shotguns. The challenge had been set, do the same thing for shotguns. In a matter of days, Yuri adapted the design of his project, changed the caliber and delivered the first samples. And here's a detail that few people know. In Ukraine, handling explosives is strictly regulated. Miners are not authorized to do it. If you break this law, prison is certain. So the 3rd Brigade took over this part. They provided access to a shooting range, helped set up the explosive charge, and tested the prototype. Two weeks later, a message arrived. It works like hell and they immediately placed an order for a hundred units for real combat testing. Yuri and his partner didn't expect that. They hadn't thought about large-scale production and weren't prepared for the problems that would come up. The first of these came up when they saw a training video from the 3rd Brigade. They recognized their ammunition being tested. The cartridge jammed in the shotgun. The instructor joked, now I'm going to die because it didn't fire. Yuri was terrified by what he saw. In an interview for the United 24 website, he said, At that moment, I was really scared because I realized that if something goes wrong, a person can be killed. The weight of responsibility pressed on his shoulders as if they were bricks. But then came an unexpected call that changed everything. It was the special forces operating on the Kursk front. They said, we tested your ammunition. It was incredible. They had used Yuri's net munitions to bring down a Russian reconnaissance Mavic drone from 50 meters away. Afterwards, they shot down two first-person view attack drones. At that moment, Yuri knew his idea worked and was already saving Ukrainian lives. But after all, how did a teenager manage to do what defense companies with huge budgets couldn't? The answer is in the unique ecosystem Ukraine has built. While Russia relies on giant centralized factories like the Alabuga facility in Tatarstan, which produces 5,000 heavy drones per month, Ukraine has taken a different path. Hundreds of small workshops, apartments, basements, warehouses, and even trenches on the front line have 3D printers assembling drones. It's decentralized production, it's chaotic, but it ensures an incredible production speed and it works. When a new Russian electronic warfare system appears on the battlefield, these workshops develop a response in weeks, not years in weeks. Yuri explained the reality well, saying, 
We have many private companies appearing and they move faster than state-owned companies. But there's no system for everything to move quickly from startup to the army. Because of this, many things remain as prototypes. The Ukrainian government established BRAV, um, a defense innovation center, to address this. The mission is clear. They want to find, fund, and accelerate the best inventions. BRAV um, connects garage inventors like Yuri with military units and provides what they need to refine their prototypes. They also help with official certification and make it easier for the army to make purchases. In other words, it's the bridge between the creator and the soldier. And units like the 3rd Brigade act as early adopters, or rather super users. They don't just use new technology, they actively collaborate in development, provide real-time feedback, test, refine, and repeat. This cycle between inventor and end user is the engine of the Ukrainian war machine. It allows them to compete in a technological arms race against a much larger adversary. And the best part, Yuri is not alone in this fight. BRAV-1 has also developed fragmentary ammunition for standard infantry rifles. 5.45 mm cartridges that fragment in the air, create a shotgun-like pattern, and increase the chances of hitting moving first-person view drones. Each soldier receives an easy-to-use magazine, just like any other magazine. There's also the anti-drone gun. It doesn't fire bullets. It emits radio frequency interference and shuts down enemy drone control channels. It weighs one kilogram. It has a range of 100 meters. It's light enough to carry anywhere. But Yuri's solution has an advantage. It uses shotguns that already exist on the front lines, doesn't require new equipment, and is more adaptable. It will probably be the most widely adopted when we talk about scale. Today, Yuri is 18 years old. He's an adult torn between three paths, continuing his studies, dedicating himself fully to the startup, or enlisting. For now, he does all three. He attends some classes on his phone while testing ammunition at military bases and participating in Sentry, the youth paramilitary camp run by the 3rd Brigade. His generation is growing up during war. Some, like Yuri, refuse to just stand by and watch. His story shows us something greater than just a simple invention. When a teenager with a 3D printer manages to create a functional weapon system that is adopted by elite units, the traditional barriers to creating instruments of war have crumbled. Combining commercial technologies like drones, 3D printing open source software, and global networks allows individuals and small groups to influence the battlefield. Something that was once reserved for great nations, and this has profound and unsettling implications for the entire world, because the tactics, techniques, and technologies being perfected in Ukraine won't stay there. They will spread around the world and be adopted by other nations, including non-state actors, insurgent groups, and who knows, even terrorist organizations. The era when advanced precision strike capabilities were exclusive to a few major powers is over. Yuri's net munition proved to be a simple and brilliant solution to a major problem on modern battlefields. But tomorrow, Russia or another adversary might create another type of drone or software that automatically avoids interception or even deployment tactics that make nets ineffective. And that, well, will require a new response, a new idea born in another garage or workshop. The lesson from all this is one. In modern technology-saturated warfare, the only sustainable strategic advantage is the ability to learn, innovate, and adapt faster than the enemy. And sometimes that advantage comes from where you least expect it.
Now I want to know your opinion. Did you ever imagine that the inspiration for a wartime innovation, one that's saving many lives, would come from a video game? Leave your answer in the comments. If this video made you think differently about innovation and modern warfare, share it with someone and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. See you next time.